everybody, it's Janet McNally of Live Playground Coaching. Introducing you today to an incredibly wonderful, wonderful person and dear friend to me, Nicholas Prattley. Nicholas is an ex-Aussie who moved to LA and um, had lived in LA. Well, he'll share with us how long he's had lived in LA and has recently moved to New York City. Um, he is going to be an author. He is an, a breathwork expert and he is an intuitive healer and I'm so delighted to have him on my show today. Hi, Nick. Hi, how are you? Thank uh, you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, Nick and I, everybody, we met um, via Facebook. So it's amazing, like social media has connected us and we've become amazingly close friends um, um, and have worked with each other uh, constantly for the last two years. Um, both of us have, you know, we've learned so much from each other. We've been very gifted and um, receiving our um, healings and our coaching with one another. Um, but Nick, um, can you give us a bit more insight into you and your, your journey and your background? Yeah, sure. Well, I have a company called introessence.com the three words in true essence in one word. Um, and I created that word because so much of the work that I do is really about connecting one to their essence and being attuned to that true connection so that everything moves from that place. Not so much a place of this is what I think I should be doing or this is what I need to do or this is what society tells me. It's very heart-based. And obviously easier said than done, but that's why we have lots of different classes and retreats and workshops and experiences and products. And it's all about just keeping us in that flow of what else can I do today that is going to keep me in my essence. And one of the main tools is breath. So I've been practicing breath work for, oh gosh, um, wow, nearly 10 years now. Um, and... It honestly is an amazing blessing to be in a room and to be guiding somebody through the breath, which is essentially an act of meditation. So most of the time people are lying down, being guided through an experience, being given certain rhythms to follow and breathe to. Uh, when they have that moment where they almost transcend what they thought they couldn't and really experience an opening of some kind. Um, I am getting chills talking about it right now. It really is an extraordinary uh, thing. And that's actually how Jen and I first met. And I gave you a session and you experienced yeah. the uh, breath work. So you know from personal experience how amazing it is and cathartic and somewhat uncomfortable sometimes. But... It's kind of like life, you know, we get things thrown at us, it feels uncomfortable, the pressure gets turned up and we want to step back and pull away or have a drink or have a pull or have a pill or do something else. But yeah, Have a pull as well. <laughs> well, yes, that can happen too. <laughs> but it's really, it's like it's too easy. You yeah. know, it's too easy to have the pressure go up and, and pull back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to continue to use that energy and breathe through it, because the, <laughs> the only way around it is through it. And yeah. the breath is the thing that allows us to go through it, which is why we notice most of the time when we get stressed, we're holding here. But if we learn to become connected to our energy, if we're in relationship to our energy, we understand that we can, okay, this is uncomfortable. Yes, I'm feeling it mostly here or wherever it is, but I'm going to breathe with my whole body. I'm going to stay connected to my energy. I'm going to breathe through this rather than back away because that tension is a form of backing away. It's a form of resistance rather than surrendering to it and going with it and going through it, no matter how uncomfortable. So there's that moment in the breath work where you have that, but you get through it 
and I continue guiding you into that bliss. And 99.999% of the time, people leave in that bliss. Yeah. Well, so, correction, people always live in that bliss. It might take some extra work. 99% yeah. of the time, it's pretty easy to get people there. They just need to be guided. Yeah. We all to be guided. And you got into the breath work through your own, is it childhood experience of asthma and learn and then swim in, et cetera. So um, you yeah. have been, you've been literally probably doing it more than 10 years. You've been, um, let's say, That's, doing it for another reason uh, for yeah, a good I mean, bit I of your really life. Have, yeah, yeah, you're right. I really have been doing it my whole life. Um, I was chronic asthmatic as a child and, you know, yeah. as a baby, was rushed to hospital and stopped breathing a couple times and had pneumonia. And when I was, uh, I think I was about seven, my mother took me to swim class and it was, the doctors were saying I need to build my lungs because I had yeah. very weak lungs. So I started swimming and I remember in my teenage years, I became very conscious that the act of swimming was very cathartic where I would be swimming and sometimes I'd cry and I'd yell underwater and mm. I mean, I didn't know then at the time that I was having my own healing experiences. And then later when I learned breath work for the first time around the age of 18, 19, it, it, it gave me a similar experience, that kind of experience of rebirth and cathartic um, yeah. process and letting go reminded me of what it was like to be a swimmer and push through that energy. Yeah. And um, that's one of the things with, you know, working with you, particularly in the breath work. I mean, a lot of people, when they hear the word uh, rebirth, they think it's all a bit wooky and, you know, out there. But, you know, with you, it's actually, you actually, when you take people through the breath work sessions, it's very physical. It, it is. I mean, mm. I physically find it hugely challenging. And mm. in that, and you also bring in empowering words. So it, 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 it's it's very grounded and it's very solid and it's, mm. as I said, really physical. So I'm, you know, I can be exhausted halfway through a session, like I'm wanting to give up, but it's pushing mm. through that that, you know, makes the difference. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, which sounds like giving birth. What you just described yeah. sounds like giving birth. And that's the thing, like we, there is a natural flow to everything, to life, to breath, to source, to all that is. And it, it actually has a very gentle flow. But because we as human, <laughs> human doers instead of human beings, we're in this doing energy which starts to cut the energy off. And we're, <sighs> so and we think we breath. can. Yeah, we think we think we can't breathe. But if we're human being, unplugging from the doing, being, we feel the flow and we feel we can breathe yeah. Yeah. rather than thinking we can. And it's, it's so interesting to, I, I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet because I know that my purpose is to open hearts. Mm -hmm. So while people come in with lots of different things and you know my promos may say certain things, my attunement is always to hold space for a heart to open. Mm. And in that process, getting someone there, there's always fine tuning. Yeah. Fine tuning. Oh, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? What is this about? What is this about? You know, hairline adjustments, as you know them. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's those little subtleties that make all the difference. And it really is. There's this construct on the planet where human doers are doing and they're cutting off source energy that lets them feel that there is flow yeah. all the time. Now, um, if the doing comes out of that flow, that's a different thing. But if we're doing, doing, doing to find flow, there's there's a stopping of the energy already. There's a disconnection of the energy happening already. Question, you know when, say, you're doing um, meditation or even yoga and right at the end you say, you know, you just breathe normally. Um, mm. You know, for me, half the time I, I'm barely inhaling. Like, you know, so my question is, is, 
us humans like do do we comp you know what percentage of our lung capacity do we do we use and mm. so more from restriction and whatever fear compared to yeah. if we actually really breathed fully all the time right what do you feel would be what would you know i know it's hard to quantify or qualify or yeah, you no, know make it something tangible what what would be different? I mean, would it be our nervous systems? Would it, you know, our energy? You know, where have you noted well, since you know you, for you the differences? Yeah, it's a great, great question. A uh, couple things. First of all, on a daily basis, we only use thirty to forty percent of our lung capacity. That's just what we do as human doers. We use thirty to forty percent. But when you do specific types of breath work, you're allowing 30 to 40 percent more oxygen into the lungs, and therefore 30 to 40 percent more blood and oxygen into the brain. So when you think about the idea that we only use 20 to 30 percent of our brain capacity, could it potentially be possible that if we were getting more blood and oxygen energy space into the brain, that we could use more of it? If there's more space in there and we're conscious of it, maybe we can use more of it. So it's very interesting to watch people over time because it's an accumulative thing. You know, it's training a muscle. Uh, like I call it a spiritual workout. Like you're really attuning yourself and strengthening this new muscle, this focus muscle almost. And I have noticed for myself and other people over time how there's like this expansion. Oh, I'm thinking about things I didn't think about before. There's this extra sense of peace that I didn't have before. Oh, I'm noticing that I'm not holding my chest up here to breathe anymore. I'm relaxed and my shoulders are down. I'm noticing I do have more sexual energy. I'm noticing I do have more energy at the gym. It's like the flow of energy. And it, it is about the oxygen, but it's more about the flow of energy. Yeah. Um, Scientifically, what happens is that there's more oxygen getting into the center of the brain around the incubus, which sits to the left side on the left hemisphere of the brain. And that is where the neuropeptides form. Essentially, you have a thought go off in the head. It sends an emotional a message to the emotional body. And once that registers in the emotional body, that the message comes back up to the brain and a neuropeptide forms. Yeah. The more that one trigger goes off, the bigger that neuropeptide gets or new ones form. Now there's a few extra intricacies scientifically to that analogy, to that explanation, but that's basically what happens. Yeah. So the incubus is the place, around. it's around there where all the neuropeptides form. And if you can start to move all of that, dislodge all of that, and there are things you can actually see in brain scans. When all of that starts to move, you can reprogram. You can literally, scientifically, actually reprogram. And can it's I just, just clarify, reprogram at a mindset breath. level or a physical body level, or both? Just in terms of the programming in the mind. Yeah what you're plugging into. And if you're changing that, then yeah, you're changing the body. Yeah. Because if you're unplugging from a construct of, I was left and I'm always going to get left, and you reprogram that into, I actually wasn't left, and I can come home to myself, and I can never be left, and I can just be loved all the time, which is yeah. possible. Can that happen just, in an instant, or would that need to have, would that be more a constant practice uh, where that changed. Okay, so I guess that's kind of neuro reconditioning and connecting those pathways again. Um, would that that would would that be more with kind of constant use of breath work and practice rather than you know a, a transformation? Or it could be you know it can be both possibly. Mm -hmm. um, Another very good question and a loaded one because there are so many different ways that it can happen. You know, if I've been meditating for 10 years and I do it, my ability to, there's a few things that happen. The breath opens you and expands you beyond just the physical body. 
people feel their aura field. We always used to think that the uh, electromagnetic field was strongest around the head. Science, scientists used to think it was just around the brain, three feet above the head, three feet below. So we think, oh, this is the biggest electromagnetic field just around here. Now we know that the biggest one is around the heart, and it sits three feet above the head and three feet below the yeah. feet. So when you get charged with life force energy, which is what breath work does, sometimes, if you're guided the right way, you will feel that electromagnetic magnetic field. So sometimes people get into that sense where they're like, oh my God, I'm so much bigger. And just by feeling the bigness of that energy, they're like, oh, the who I really am is so much bigger than that teeny tiny thought that I was having. So they automatically shift. Yeah. And then yeah. somebody else might be practicing, like I do, that space in between the hemispheres. Yeah. Is to just to sit in that space in meditation. And wow, if you go into that in breath work, yeah. and you're opening that space, then that's automatically unplugging you from stuff that isn't serving you. You know, so there are so many different ways that it can happen, mm -hmm. and it's different for everybody. But yes, it's definitely a practice. Um, and even in that practice, people find that they have different perspectives to yeah. experience how to yeah. reframe an experience. Yeah, yeah, I get but it. But it's a, it's a the, the one consistent thing I will say is that it connects them to their energy. They feel, they're feeling an energetic response to what they're doing. Yes. They're not just thinking, they're feeling. Yeah. So, the, you know, there's unlimited benefits to to do in this work it. and in, in this practice and the other word you mentioned there was even though the, the people's energy it ultimately everything's about energy and that's the one thing you know in terms of um, my experience has been you know we do our sessions in over skype you know but energetically we're no less connected than when we are face to face in the same room, like we were for our very first session. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, is the power in this, in in, in you know, in, in in the work, in the in the breath work, and even in, you know, from an intuitive healing perspective, you know, um, distance no has no, but there's no such thing as distance. It's connection. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, all there all there is is between you and I. Distance is energy. Yeah. yeah. And we're just connecting to it by breathing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> it is really cool. The best I mean, part about it is that you feel good. Yeah. You know, people are running around and, and it's all fine. There's nothing, you know, like we all, I mean, I do it. We all do what we do. But people spend so much money on massages and the gym and looking good and let me do that pill and yeah. okay now I'm going to do this cleanse and again it's all good and we all have to do what makes us feel good if that makes you feel good then that's what you should do um, but it is interesting to know the amount of practice that somebody does not do that makes you feel really good um, and this is one of them yeah, yeah. and it, you know breath work isn't for everybody too but I have noticed that the people that are committed to let me drive through this uncomfortable uncomfortability for just a moment. Let me breathe through that. Let me push through that. Let me use my courage and my power and let myself surrender and be guided and just see what's on the other side. That's like surrendering to life. It's yeah. a metaphor for life. Pressure yeah. goes up, we pull away. Yeah. Pressure goes up in the breath work, you keep going. And you get to the list. Yeah, absolutely. And the more that muscle gets trained, that's, self, that's ultimate self-empowerment. Yeah, and people, I, I highly encourage you to um, go to, to Nick's website and um, contact him. Nick's going to be producing some videos and, um, you know, on his blog and stuff like that where he can share more 
um, where he's going to start to share or where he's sharing information on breath work and um, also connect in with him around having uh, sessions. Um, have a session, as I said. Yeah. I, Nick and I constantly do it, you know, halfway around the world. Um, so, so Nick, um, do you want to just share with how people can contact you? Yeah, quickly? I would love to. So if you go to my website, introessence.com, I am... T R U E S S E N C E dot com. Uh, my sessions over Skype are usually two hundred dollars, but if you book through and mention Janet's uh, show, uh, by the end of the month, I'm giving a hundred dollars off. So it's a hundred dollars wow. per session, That's sixty amazing. minute session over Skype. Um, I would be honored to share that gift with you guys. So. Definitely, yeah, people. You got to. You got to. Um, and also, you know, later on in the year, you might have some interesting info coming out. You're working with a university, and oh, I won't share too much about it. But there's some real good stuff coming out around breath work and exercise yeah. that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, some as amazing well. research work coming out that is uh, very. Um, uh, it, it get, there's a lot of research work that's coming out to support what we're talking about scientifically. So to see it from a case study point of view where we're studying groups of people and their responses to stress levels and the stress chemical going down in their body just by breathing, it is profound. The, and just while I think about it real quick, when you think about the breath, it's the thing that we come into this physical body with and it's the thing that takes us out of this physical body. So if we're really connected to it, Maybe we can connect to that place that we came from or that place that we're going to. And maybe it's the tool that can heal everything in between. Yeah. yeah. And it's the one tool that we're not always taught at the school to use. And it's the one tool whenever we get stressed that we forget about. Yeah. It's the first thing. Like if I tell any of you right now to take a deep breath in, we all go using 30-40% yeah. of our lung capacity. If we say, take a, if we say take, a, take a deep breath out. Yeah, short. Not air, push it all out. Yeah. Now I'm getting 20-30% to 30 more air in the top of my lungs. Now I'm breathing with my whole body all the way in. Yeah. All the way. In. So just try that next time you get stressed. And you notice all the tension here, and you're breathing like this, and you're wondering why your shoulders are hurting. Just relax, breathe out, start to breathe with your whole body, and already right away this tension is starting to move out. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're so good at saying, oh my God. God, there's a thought and I have to figure that thought out and until I figure that thought out and I understand the whole story behind the thought, my life is not going to be okay and I'm always going to have demons and voices in my head and, uh, and I get it. Hey, yeah. like, I, you know, I totally get it. We're saying, saying just I'm breathe. I'm not it out. I'm not freaking Buddha or anything. But just breathe it out. <laughs> it's, it, it's all energy. Yeah. It's all energy. Thought is energy. Breath is energy. The electromagnetic field that we feel when we breathe and we find that bliss state is energy. It's all energy. We come in with that, we go out with that. We go back, to, we came from energy, we go back to energy. Consciousness, source, life force. Yeah. And it, 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 like we can make up much simpler than we do. Oh, tension. Right. Okay, relax my body, breathe with my whole body. Help that energy move. You know, and then there's more work that we do in the sessions to get you in relationship to what that energy is, but not in a thinking way. Yeah. In a feeling way that gives you the answers that you're looking for. It's just a different way of doing it. It's awesome. really cool. It is cool. It is cool. And everybody, I really, really encourage you to um, to give it a go and even subscribe to, to, to Nick's um um, newsletters, etc., because this this work he's doing with this university that we can't mention just yet, but it, it is going to be really profound. And I think you know, be the first to hear about it when it's ready to be shared, because um, you know, 
they're going to prove things and it will be kind of at that physical level as well the scientific level yeah and uh, you know it's it's going to be a major 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 thing for us to to receive and learn and integrate into our lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well yeah, my thank friend, you for thank you for sharing this Jana because it yeah. really is i mean it it, it is so so people sometimes hear about it and they're like, oh, well, that's, that's almost too simple. You know, it's almost too simple and I can't breathe. Yeah. Yet, it's like the one tool that we're all given and if used correctly can be so powerful. Yeah. And you know that it's powerful based on the way that you feel. Because when you're in that bliss state and you feel your heart open and you actually feel how to redirect energy in your mind so you're not holding on to that thought and going crazy and you feel it release. Yeah. Uh, that's that's self-care. That's what this great yeah. big thing on the planet right now about redesigning what healthcare is is about. Like we get to be our own healers. Yeah. Our own, our I own heart openers. I was going to say that as well. That brings us back to the whole... That, you know what you said earlier is about human being it's it's simple you know if hmm. things are actually simple and breath is the most you know breath is actually probably one of the most unconscious things that we do we breathe unconsciously mm -hmm. but we do it and you know I think I think we could talk and well it could be four or five other sessions where we can link the simplicity of breath to the simplicity of living and yeah. as you said the the, 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 the the gremlins and the noise that goes in our head. So I, I think we I think we gotta I think this will be a kind of a continuate continuing um, story or sorry I say a sharing of knowledge over the yeah. coming weeks. Um, I think it'd be worth having a follow up to, to take that a bit further. Yeah, I would love to. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. So. I think so, my friend. I think so. <laughs> well, look, I just want to say a big thank you. Um, we have people to check back because we, Nick and I have a, a, an awesome announcement uh, for something uh, that is going to, a co-creation we're putting together in July. We're going to put out some uh, details about that over the next week or two. Um, so we won't share it now. We'll share it, we'll share it in about a week or two. But... Um, Nick, I, it's it's quite late with you in New York right now, so um, thank you so much, my dear friend. I love you tons. I love you dearly. Absolutely. And, um, Time, yeah, thank you for just being the, the beauty and the light that you are in this world. And it, it's such an honor to have you, you know, here in my heart and to be able to work with you and, you know, learn from you um, on a daily basis, basically. I we do. I do. Hmm. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Nick. Likewise. Likewise. Pleasure, my darling. Take care. And uh, Pleasure. yes, and go to bed. It's, it's way past midnight now. Yeah, it's time. It's, time to it's 11.30, but it's time to go to bed. Uh, good night. <laughs>